everyone, it's Movie Lover 120 here, and I'm here with a brand new movie review. And um, today I'm actually going to be continuing my Halloween series. This week it will be Halloween 4 and Halloween 5. And uh, I'm wondering, aren't you going to review Halloween 3 Season of the Witch? Guys, someday, but not for this lineup. Because one, it's not a Michael Myers movie. It shouldn't even be called Halloween 3. It should have just been called Season of the Witch. Two, I'm only reviewing the Michael Myers stuff as the countdown to Halloween Kills. And Halloween 3 is not canon in this franchise, so you can technically skip that movie if you wanted to see Michael Myers go to Halloween 4 and you wouldn't miss a thing. So yeah, Halloween 3 Season of the Witch is not going to count for this lineup because Halloween 4 should have been Halloween 3, but... I get they were trying to do something different, but, but still. Anyways, yeah, this review is going to be Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. So, we all know when, after Halloween 2, they want to move on from Michael Myers' storyline and say Michael Myers died after Halloween 2 and do a different kind of story. So they tried that with Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. It was not well received by people, and it was hated. It bombed at the box office. Nobody liked it. They hated that Michael Myers was absent. So, that pretty much turned Michael Myers into a slasher icon. So, with the next movie, that was released six years after Halloween 3, they moved on from trying their new thing and went back to Michael Myers with this movie. So, and of course, well, it wasn't really well received either, but it was better received than Season of the Witch, and has grown kind of a cult following among Halloween fans, and Michael Myers fans. And today we're gonna find out why. So, the plot of this movie. He butchered 16 people trying to get to his sister. He was shot and incinerated, but still the entity that Dr. Loomis, played by le legendary Donald Pleasance, calls evil on two legs would not die. Tonight, Michael Myers has come home again to kill. This time, Michael returns to Hanfield for Jamie Lloyd, played by Daniel Harris, who would go on to be the lead in the next two in 5 and 6 and would go on to play a character in the Rob Zombie remix. The orphan daughter of Laurie Strode and her babysitter Rachel, played by Ellie Cornell, who would go on to play in Halle 5 and then played in a, a crap Uva Bull movie called House of the Dead. Can Loomis stop Michael before the unholy slaughter reaches his innocent young niece? Also starring in this movie are Michael Pataki, Sasha Jensen, and Kathleen Kenmont. The Snash sequel that marks the long way to return to the original storyline returns infamous for its startling twist ending and graphic violence. Now, if I had to rank this, I would rank it fifth best. And here's why. Because it's an improvement over the horrendously bad movie, Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, which didn't have the main villain Michael Myers. Michael Myers returns to this only as a new mask and with the same serial killing tendencies, still carries the same mysterious terrifying mysterious tone like the first two films the new and it has this new character Jamie Lloyd who's the niece of Michael and the daughter Lori Strode and, and for being a new take on the final girls of child and is definitely one of the most one of the best characters in the franchise to this day although I still prefer Lori Strode but like Jamie Lloyd as well Danielle Harris does a very outstanding job in her performance as Jamie Lloyd too, some even likable new characters like Rachel Caruthers, who is very similar to Laura Strode's. They are both action survivors and defend themselves and kids younger than them from Michael Myers by facing your fears and fighting back. And then there's Sheriff Ben Meeker, who unlike most cops on horror films, is actually a competent officer of the police force and actually assists Dr. Loomis in taking down Michael. It's also some great acting, mainly, mainly from Ellie Cornell, BAU star, Kathleen Kinmont, and others. Donald Pleasance returns us home to play Dr. Loomis. He will always be Dr. Loomis and be the only true Dr. Loomis. Just with a messed up face due to the explosion of a hospital in Halloween 2, and then still gives a great performance. As a new and great soundtrack, and George 
George Wilbur gives a pretty neat performance as Michael Myers. Not as, not, sure not, don't, not as much as like Ned Castle or stuff, but, but yeah, still a pretty good performance, nonetheless. In the end scene where a bunch of people gun down Michaels, he falls through the ground, is totally awesome. And I definitely pretty much like the twist ending, but there's also some bad parts of it, too, and we're going to get to the bad qualities, man. Basically, Jamie Lee Curtis doesn't really return to play Laura Strode in this film, and the script said basically said Laura died in a car crash. There's still plenty of unlikable characters like Brady, Kelly Meeker, and the kids at Jimmy's school. And the twist ending. Now it's a pretty neat twist ending, but the idea of Jamie becoming the new villain of the franchise is ridiculous, and thankfully it gets scrapped in the next film, but the next film is just freaking terrible, and I'm going to get to why in that review. There's this... And there's false advertising, like the poster features, or DVD cover, features Michael Myers' original mask. But in this movie, his mask is revealed to be awful and not intimidating at all. There's a goof featuring Michael's mask with blonde hair instead of black. And, um, kind of a good quality as well. Tommy and Lindsay do kind of come back in this movie, from the first film. They do return to some as teenagers, but... They barely get any screen time, so their cameos are really pointless. And the trucker is acting like the law enforcement was such a stupid plot point, resulting in the death of Ted Hollister, thanks to those idiots. The kills are pretty lame, and like I said, it wasn't really well received by critics, but it has grown kind of a cult following among fans of the series. The reason I personally think it's still a pretty fine movie, not as much as other as two other other films that are that it's behind that I haven't reviewed yet, definitely not like as great as Halloween 1978 and Halloween 2 1981. Uh, I still still think it's fine for what it is, especially compared to the ones that come after it. Well, two infamous ones that come after it. Anyways, but so if you are a fan of Halloween Michael Myers. I give this, like, maybe just one watch, and that's really it. Not really worth watching again, but... Anyway, here's... Here's how I would probably rank this movie. I am going to give Halloween 4 a 6.5 out of 10. Well, that pretty much wraps up my review for Halloween 4 Revenge of Michael Myers. I mean, Return of Michael Myers. I'll put this one back. Alright, hold on, guys. Because, um, okay, <clears throat> now that I've reviewed four, the next Halloween movie is going to be for none other than, oh, fuck, still a sticker on it, I peeled off, you can see the full title. Well, I'm getting there, guys. I'll just, un I'll just unwrap this one. Next one is when the series was starting to die. The Revenge of Michael Myers. That's going to be really fun, but I'll just say this. Maybe it's not as bad as, like, the one that comes after it, and one that comes after H20 20 years later, and uh, Rob Zombie's second one, but it's still pretty bad. That's all I'm going to say. Definitely not going to be as positive as this. Alright. But anyway, that'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and if you like this and want to see more, well then don't forget to like, subscribe to Movie Lover 120.